we're serving up to a school students sitting in front of the computer who takes the papyrus. Nobody's looked at it for 2,000 years, and he's transcribing it for the first time. Well, we have over a million fragments of papyrus ranging in size from a postage stamp uh, to the size of a Sunday Times newspaper. A small core of experts worked on them for over a century, just piece by piece, letter by letter, painstakingly reconstructing the text. But it was just a drop in the bucket. In a century, we published less than 1% of the material. I had the idea of speeding up uh, the process uh, by using the internet. It's citizen science. Ancient Lives within the first week brought in 125,000 new members to the community. As a child, I was fascinated by the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the idea that a whole library forgotten, sealed up in a cave, and then 2,000 years later, somebody, a peasant, stumbles on it. Uh, uh, the whole study of a religion is, is revolutionized. Uh, I work on ancient paper. Most of it comes from Egypt, in particular Greco-Roman Egypt. They left behind a huge treasure trove of ancient documents. Papyrus is made up of strips of the papyrus plant pressed together into strips at 90 degree angles, so there are two layers of it. It was used first in a scroll form and then later in the form of pages of a book. When a book wore out, it was very often turned over and they recycled the back. It was a valuable commodity, but eventually it wore out. Uh, maybe it was used to wrap fish in, to make up cartonnage or cardboard, but eventually it went into the ground, into a rubbish mound, into a tomb, sometimes into a, a, a house foundation. The Oxyrhynchus collection has over a million fragments of papyrus that were brought back to England by two Oxford undergraduates, A.S. Hunt and B.P. Grenfell, brought back over 10 years of excavation, a thousand boxes of papyri, numbering well over a million fragments. And these are now housed in the Sackler Library where a small team of researchers works on them. So I ran a digitization project. We made digital images of them. We created a computer data bank so they could be sifted through instantaneously. And it's these images that we put into the Ancient Lives project to let interested amateurs, professionals, and even school children learning the Greek alphabet for the first time come into the project. So when you go in here, um, the user is just seeing the image of the papyrus. As you can see, they've got a keyboard of Greek right here. Now, this is just based on simple pattern recognition. This does not require you to know Greek. If you know Greek, that's fantastic. But you just need to be able to make the connection between the letters you see on the keyboard and what you see on the papyrus. So every time you see a character, you click where it is. You just basically start transcribing. Epsilon, oh, that's, that's gamma, there's rho, and so on. And you go on and do as much as you can do. Some users will do uh, just a couple of lines. Some users will spend hours upon hours and just transcribing as much papyri. Um, as, as they possibly can. What we were actually doing is capitalizing on these people's time, exploiting their interest, uh, but also their willingness to actually help out uh, with a research project, to actually produce data that then they could see the results of, because they can call back up the transcript, they can see the translation in the end of what they've transcribed. So if there's a payoff for, uh, for them, there's a payoff for us. As of around last October, uh, we had well over 1.5 million transcriptions, and uh, that's, it was over 7 million individual characters that had been recorded in the system. So for within just about a year of the project, we had more transcriptions uh, taken than basically that has ever been done. It's called crowdsourcing because we deal with hundreds of thousands of people entering hundreds of thousands of texts every day into a database. The actual papyrus texts contain a menagerie of detail from the ancient world, from the books that were read in schools to their census returns and their uh, tax papers. 
And almost every year we do find a new gospel that is previously unattested, uh, but offers a completely new account. What we had from this wealth of garbage was something like a complete picture of an ancient social world.